Because we're lining up on the grid now. And this side is going to be important. Because it's not easy to overtake in full wet conditions. You don't have DRS. And we need to make moves early on. If we want to be fighting for the win here today. And it lights out. And away we go for round two of PSGL. We get a much better start than Freddy Rasmus. And Matthijs behind us get a brilliant start as well. We cover off the inside. And we're going to be going down the inside of Freddy Rasmus. And decide to keep it tight um, on this exit. To give, give Freddy the space on that exit. We have got so much more clean air there um, on the outside. And we manage to gain one position here on the start uh, which is crucial it's not easy to overtake as I said and especially Freddy Rasmussen who usually is very fast in these conditions so it was crucial we got ahead because Thomas just doesn't seem very comfortable in these conditions uh, and struggling to see Parry losing the backhand as well Thomas still struggling with the backhand and we're gonna try and have a little look here um, not really an overtaking opportunity just yet as my backhand wants to step out as well and this exit is going to be crucial Thomas has run wide and this is going to give us the opportunity into turn one surely we're going to turn on the overtake button and have a little look into turn one and now we can start hunting down Barry Boroman who is eight times behind Barry and we decide to go into the box for a brand new set uh, of intermediates to look to Blakely still out and that's what I said he is struggling right now um, because he had to stay out that extra lap. But after that, we were just in such a good flow. We were putting in fastest lap after fastest lap. Some laps gaining six tenths to Barry. And sometimes, you can see there, we gained over a second on that lap. We were not the fastest today uh, in dry conditions, but we were clearly the fastest in these rainy conditions. And we're going to be getting our first win on F122 in league racing. True. Anyway, safety car restart. Bit of a poor restart for me, to be honest. Um, I wanted to have good momentum coming onto the straight, but uh, a lot of people ahead of me were thinking the same. So when the actual restart happened, uh, the gaps were so big, I couldn't catch up. But Otis up to P11 already. We're still in P13. And we're gonna try and get him moved on. And Harvey Cohen in that Ferrari. He had a little bit of a moment there. Um, I was trying to set up a move into that S section, but I just couldn't quite pull it off. But now, down the inside, which turns into the outside for this one, up to P12 we go. And that is a lovely move. We've got so much more grip. Switch back on Mirko Suriano, up to P11 we go. And now we're only four positions behind where we actually boxed. However, we still need to overtake them, um, which is easy said and done. Overtaking is very hard in wet conditions as they're battling up front. Otis tries to go for the switchback, gets covered off, and we decide to go all the way around the outside, which turns to the inside for the next one. Otis turned in a little bit too early, which made me unsettle the car after that tap. I gave him the space, returning onto the track and into the final corner. We go side by side. I get the power down a little bit earlier as we head side by side into turn one. We've got enough space ahead of us to break, uh, break deep. And <laughs> I told Jake to shut up. We managed to get it moved on. We definitely went for the right strategy. Uh, now the question is, can we even get more out of this? Uh, you can see we were almost pushing him around there as we were trying to get past hey. him. Um, hey, what have you done? This moment. <laughs> and now the leader is only 1.4 seconds ahead of us. And we need to try and get him before it dries up. We need to try and get him as fast as we can because everyone is going to be struggling more and more on the tires. Into Just lap 23 to go now. Uh, Jake wanted to fit, but he ended up not fitting. And down the inside of Patrick Seepos we go. And that is the lead of the race, although he's fighting this back on those old tires. And he's managing to do that pretty well, but he has to give up eventually. Up to P1 we go with the fast lap of the race. You can see though, the track is drying and Thomas Warner has boxed for a new set of softs because Patrick has so much more straight line speed or quite a lot more straight line speed and he has a DRS so that basically means we're oh, going to no, be struggling here to fight him wheel to wheel um, but as I went for the switchback I saw he was flashing and I was so surprised by that because I thought he had oh, so much more DRS well. um, and that gave me hope again because that means we can go for the move uh, later on 
and that we do have a little bit more ERS on him. Uh, as you can see now, he started flashing there as we were on 15, 16%. So we've got a 6% advantage. And he was using ERS there on the exit. So it's not over quite yet. But oh, he got a penalty. As you can see there. Sorry, clown. See, boss. Oh, back him up, please. I'm behind. I'm behind. I'm behind. I'm behind. Oh. Yeah. He basically gifted the win to me now. Um, but I still decided that I wanted to win this on track, nonetheless, because you never know if penalties are going to get removed. So I still wanted to win this. As Patrick is once again using more ERS on that exit, I decided not to because um, I wanted to use it uh, when I was out of the dirty air, basically. Uh, once I um, got on this exit, I wanted to be close. And you can see uh, we gained a bit of time back with more cornering speed. Now we turn on the overtake button. We're closing, we're closing, three, hundred, uh, three tenths behind going into the hairpin. And now it's all going to come down to the DRS. He got a bad exit, a lot of wheel spin. And that just helps us even more. But even with the DRS and the ERS advantage, we're not closing that fast. We might not even be clear going into the left hander. We're trying to defend into the next left hander. We go side by side. He leaves us the space on the exit into the next right hander. We go side by side. Patrick is still there. We're gonna leave the space on the exit, but we're gonna be clear heading into the next left-hander and into the lead of the race we go. We cover up the inside and Patrick tries to get the switch back, doesn't get it done. And for the first time in 2023, we're gonna be winning a league race after starting in P15, having not practiced after being sick all week. Uh, probably shouldn't have gone in the ice water in Sweden, but we take it anyway, P15 to P1. What a race, honestly, one of my best races. And that is job done. Jana Wotmeer now to the last couple of quarters now. His finest drive, his greatest drive, and he's done it at the circuit of the Americas. He returns to the top step of the podium. Once again, the GOAT is back. Jana Wotmeer wins the US Grand Prix. Into turn one, we reach 316 kph. Gain a few hundreds, just over 10 back to Fab, who makes a Big mistake in turn three, loses the back end, and now into turn four we go. I use the overtake button to go around the outside, into turn four, all the way around the outside. He's leaving us the space, into turn five we go, down the inside. But now we need to be careful to not overshoot the corner and cover off the switchback. Try to go on throttle as early as possible, but we manage to come out ahead in P3. As big tank slapper there on the exit, uh, and that's what I said. This, this track is so hard, it's so hard to drive with that much rotation because of course he doesn't have the battery anymore, he used all of it uh, during the undercut but this also invites us to have a go at Barry because ideally we will be in P2 uh, getting DRS every lap which helps us recharge the battery faster as we move on to the final chicane uh, of uh, this lap um, see I get a big snap of oversteer How do um, wheel spin though? Um, yeah, I tried to turn on the overtake yeah. button and take that last corner flat out. However, we still managed to get around the outside of Barrier into turn one. We just about get ahead into turn one. And now we're not going to get any DRS on this straight. I think Nicolas will, but uh, we have the warm tires and you can see Nicolas just pulling away. I think he's using his battery as well here to try and create a gap, but he knows as well. These warm hearts are going to be performing much better. And now we're going to have a little look around the outside of Brooklyn. So you can see we've got so much more grip. And around the outside we go of Nicolas. And that's crucial for a race. We've got track position now. And we're basically in a net P2 behind Alvaro Caraton. Um, of course, you've got a maximum deployment allowed of ERS per lap as well. So we need to make sure we don't hit that in the run up. As you can see, not happy there because I made a quite a big mistake, which cost me a lot of time. We can see we are getting close enough now to have an attempt at least into the final corner. You can see we nailed the apex there and we got a good exit. We got a good run. We end the slipstream of Ismail Fassier in the run up to the final corner. And you can see Tom Manley no DRS and he has no battery remaining as well. We're going to have a little look down the inside of the final corner, but we're going to play it safe and go for the switchback. Turn on the overtake, we know we've got more battery, we've got more traction because of the better tires. We're gonna take the slipstream here of Ismail Felsi, but we just missed out. Luckily for us, Ismail had a 
five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. And we did win on track. I then want to start a new softs, just in case the rain does come late. Now, onto the race we go then, it's going to be five red lights. And away we go. We get a pretty good start of the line compared to the soft runners. Thomas Runner starting in last place, by the way. So um, he decided to go for a last first challenge in this race. And you see Carter Lundy um, squeezing us a little bit initially, but then leaving us a state later on. As they almost crashed on the section. So uh, that was scary because uh, we were right behind that. I always feel like it's better to lose one or two positions as Andre Tarabukin goes off into the grass. What are these? And as you can see, each other's face, man. <laughs> it's getting very messy. Uh, left it uh, with a big moment. A lot of people struggling in these half wet, half dry conditions. We've turned on the overtake button to try and defend from Antoine Dezeluski as he boxes, luckily. So uh, now it's Thomas Runner, our nice. championship nice. rival, right behind us. Um, we decide to continue for another lap. You can see the asphalt is getting very, very wet, but we could have lost four positions in this opening few laps. Um, and yeah, we need to try and turn this around as soon as possible if we want to stay in this championship fight. Thomas Ronner, of course, right behind us. Um, so that is good, but Ruben Pedreno and Jake Benham are in the fight for this title as well. So we need to keep an eye on them as well. And you can see we get a much better exit than Antoine um, out of the final corner. And can we go for a move into turn one? In the slipstream, and you can see he has a little bit more straight line speed. I think we were both using the overtake button. I was having a little look down the inside, but Antoine covers it off. Now, can we go for the switch back here? Harlem Marquis right ahead of us. Can we get a power down a little bit earlier? We can, but you see, we almost tapped him. I think we might have a little bit tapped him um, on that exit, but it didn't really matter that much. Down the inside we go into turn four. I went a little bit deep, but managed to slow it down enough to keep him space. We keep him space on that exit as well, and up to P12 we go. And now there is a safety car. What is this Delta? Now there's a safety car deployed, so okay, yeah, pretty far back there. But you can see it's a complete mess in turn one. We're gonna try and take an advantage of that. And on the switchback, you can see we get the power down much better. But Carter is out of shape, out of turn three. And we're sandwiched between an Alpine and an Alfa Romeo. And down the inside of the Ferrari we go to try and cover off Antoine, who hits us on the entry. And a little bit of a domino effect there, because Antoine hits us. We, uh, because of that hit, the Ferrari, right. and now we're going side by side through the middle sector with Mo Desto Mena. Pretty much equal on the exit, but we've got the slipstream. You can see Medical gets a big snap hold here. Over the grass we go, around the outside, and we've got more momentum now because of the snap hold here of Mirko. Into turn one we go, side by side. Mirko down the inside he goes, he locks up. Sends us a little bit wide onto the grass. We go, we get the inside for the next one, but the outside for the left hander, which has proven to be so good for us this whole race. We get the power down and we got more momentum by taking the outside and into the lead. We go with nine laps to go. We're gonna win after starting in P11, losing effectively four positions, gaining two because of others' misfortunes. Restarting the race in P13, and we're gonna win by over 18 seconds to the rest of the grid. This is where it all counts. We need to stay within one position of Thomas Ronar, simply said, um, if he does win the race. Now off to a great start into turn one. We get ahead on those medium tires. Daniel Adat on the mediums as well. He's gonna try and spice things up early on in this race as well. We're just gonna try and get as much track position as possible in the opening few laps. And as you can see here, Thomas is right with us now. Our rear tires are screaming at this point for help. Um, 12 laps is a long time for the mediums. So we might have to box either at the end of this lap or the end of the next lap. Um, but I kind of want to get the arrest from Thomas for another lap. Um, just as a little advantage. He's going to be faster at this point. so. Can manage to stick in the DRS for an extra lap that will only help us later on in this race. But now, 
this is where it's gonna get fun. This is where the dogfight starts. We cannot let Thomas go, obviously, because we are most likely not gonna catch Ismail um, before the end of the race, unless his tires completely fall off the cliff. All we can do here is fight as hard as we can in every single straight, in every single corner. We have to keep him behind, because ideally, Ismail or Daniel Haddad are gonna win this race. You can see I'm going defensive into turn five. And now Thomas is gonna get DRS, but we are as well. And we're gonna enable the overtake here. We're gonna go defensive into the next chicane. You see Daniel Haddad is getting a little bit of slipstream into the next chicane. We're gonna go defensive. Thomas is going for a switch back here, but we're obviously gonna try and cover that off on this exit. And you see, we stay alive for one lap longer. Every single lap that we can keep him behind is going to be hurting his race massively. And that is our goal here. We need to have him lose as much time as possible to either Ismail or Jake. Oh my fucking yes. god. Learn how Thomas to race. He hit such one. Pretty hard there. Almost spun out. The ERS saving we did earlier on has kept us alive. But we are running out sooner or later. And we're gonna have a tire disadvantage until the end of the race. I decided to go for the outside there so I can get more momentum onto the back straight. Unfortunately, we don't have quite the grip. We're going for the switchback and we're going down the inside, trying to get a slipstream again for the next chicane. We're gonna try and maybe send it down the inside. Thomas carves it off very, very late. We're gonna try and go around the outside, but you can't quite pull off. We go over the track, Jay goes past. And at this point, um, it's kind of in Jake's hands from here on. You can see we've lost so many positions as Duncan Hovland goes for a move down the inside. So does Jake, goes down the inside, a little bit of a tap. And this is exactly what we needed. We needed Thomas to lose time, and we have exactly managed to do that. Um, and as you can see there, Thomas hits Jake around. Um, well, that's one way to get him out of the way. Now, at the time, I did not know yet that Thomas yeah. will be awarded a five second time penalty. So as long as we can just stay within that five second window, we are gonna win the championship. We failed winning PSGL, but today is gonna be our day. Um, into the final few corners we go, and we are gonna be WR champions for the first time with two corners to go. You see there's a big fight going on uh, up ahead. It doesn't matter anymore anyway. We're gonna be winning our first WR title. Across the line we go. It is time for a new season of F1 Esports and we go racing at Bahrain International for the opening contest of the year. Perfect getaway for Lucas Blakely, not the only one as well. A second McLaren is heading through and putting pressure on Rona. Barry Borman trying to make it a 1-2. Does he get the room? He does get the room. Will they find their way through? The driver from the front row all over the road, but continues through. Blakely with a dream getaway. Ronald with not the one that he wanted, and he is battling to stay in P3. Blakely, Burrowman, Rona, Otmer, and Rasmus in the top five as Otmer gets ahead. Oh, great start from Otmer from fifth to third already on lap one. That's exactly what the double world champion wanted. And uh, you'd have to imagine the McLaren drivers may even try some sort of double overtake on Otmer, because of course Otmer does not have. Here's the moment, here's the moment. He pulls out of the slipstream and he goes to the inside. Otmer won't have a choice. Barry Burrowman's going to take the lead of this one. It's Otmer over the road. Otmer rejoins and Barry Burrowman's very nearly there. He's not the only one. The McLaren's fighting through here. Burrowman through, Blakely to the inside, and Jarno Otmir, having held the lead brilliantly after that strategy, loses out to both McLarens. I think Otmir might be on the team radio for that one. We'll have to see a replay of that, but seem to be pushed off the road ever so slightly. As we go on now, forward with Jarno Otmir. Final lap of the race, best run of the race for the man trying to take second place. He goes tight to the inside, they've both got DRS. The champion is moving up to second position. Jarno Otmir gets one McLaren. Can he get the other on the final lap? We are fighting for P3 still here, and we've got a very full battery, which we are yet ready to use. Lucas has a big tank slapper. We decide to go for the switchback 
on the next right hander. We get a better run up the hill. Longe, uh, Lucas gets the slipstream from Nicolas Longe. We decide to go all the way around the outside and up to P5 we go. However, it's not quite over yet. We're looking to fight to be fighting for a podium position here on the last lap. Nicolas is flashing. We still got 40% battery into turn one we go. I'm not sure if we hit him there. However, Nicolas decides to go off track. We get the arrest. Nicolas gets it as well. However, we got a lot more battery remaining. And here's Opmir, and here's Blakely, and here's Longay, and here's turn nine. And will he roar around the outside and take the position? Oh. Stand back and admire that one. Jarno Opmir from the top shelf. Lights out, and we are racing. We leave the line with a good reaction time for our pole sitter. Now, can Otmir get into the slipstream? We're line the stern as we go down to turn number one. You can see the Haas driver pulling out of the slipstream. Otmir tucks in behind Rasmussen, and is that going to be the inside line? Is that going to be the race lead? Oh, it's super brave from Rasmussen to keep his footed and keep the race lead. He's on medium tyres, and that is going to be tight and risky from Ron Hart, but he's on the hards, and that means it's a little bit of a different warm up phase. The top three are in in the same order that they left the grid with Edu in fourth, Blakely in fifth position as we come across the line and now we move to P2 because Jarno Otmir's getting there on the superior grip of the medium tyre, Otmir getting past and crucially doing so in a way and Edu goes through as well so the medium tyre is that obviously the one to be on at the moment that's exactly how you would expect it but if you've got the grip you've got to make the move. I would fully expect to see Freddie Rasmussen and Jarno Otmir thinking about a pit stop this lap and again, are they thinking, look, is it the worst thing ever to be third or fourth in that train if you've got two or three lap fresher tyres come the end of the race? This is a long race, 50%. All of you league racers out there have been asking for this. We've got it. <laughs> Strategy. Now, this is fascinating. In comes our race leader, Jarno Otmir to P1. They've not gone the same way. Uh, Ron Hart, actually, need to mention him. He was two seconds back. He's now already in the DRS train. Ron Hart is flying out there. And you've got Otmir not waiting around, getting past Daniele Haddad. And he's making that move. That is for track position. Those are different strategies meeting. Uh, Daniele Haddad and Jarno Otmir. Wheel to wheel. That's slow here. Oh, this is a great opportunity for Otmir. But look at where he's... Yeah, that's exactly the point. If you catch at the wrong time, well, it was a risk to go around the outside of the corners that he did. And that is very tight. And Rasmussen getting through. And if you come across the Williams at the moment... Well, he's not got entirely through. Rasmussen finally finds his way by. 1.4 seconds now. That could have decided the race. It's as simple as that. That could have decided the race because now there's no DRS. And that was just a driver having not made their stop so far, losing the time, entirely fair to fight, but it has given Otmir an opportunity. But this man's day has finally arrived. Round the final corner for the final time. Jano Otmir is a winner again in F1 Esports. He takes his first win of the year. So much to digest, Alex, so much to digest. But Jano Otmir back at the top. Just, just give him a good qualifying performance and he can deliver, and my God, did he do. No delay, five lights on, it's raining at Kota, and we go racing for what could be a pivotal contest in this year's Pro Championship. Ron Ha trying to defend from Boromund, who's got the better launch, he's going to the inside. Ron Ha circumspect at this stage, the McLaren's gonna take the lead, they're very close to banging wheels in the opening corner of the race. He's trying to keep his foot in, McLaren backs his ass, and Barry Boromund's off the road there as they try to feel their way through the conditions. Ron Ha gets back the lead that he lost for all of a couple of metres. And uh, he's found his form as Jano Watmir, but he needs to do a bit better than fourth in this race if he wants to seriously mount a championship challenge. Yeah, he just needs to go for wins. Wins are all that will do for him. And it's Barry Boromant going over the line, and he's a few miles away from a second victory in the championship. But the man who denied him that accolade in Monza is going to try and do the same thing again. Ron Hard trying to move to his third win of the year. Barry Burrowman looking for his second. And Jano Otmir hoping there's drama ahead. They're coming into picture, now heading down to the 12th corner on the racetrack. Ron Hart trying to take it away, tries the swap, tries the dummy. Bold, brilliant, wheel banging off the road for Boromund. And Jano Otmir might take him here. This is extraordinary. Jano Otmir has gone into the lead momentarily. He's off the road. It's gone wild. It's gone absolutely wild at the end. Jano Otmir takes the lead. The driver in P3 is off. And now it's Ron Hart. It's barely believable. Jano Otmir is going to do it. 
He's going to win two races back to back. They push each other off track. We get a mega exit here. Both, both of them go off the track and into the next right hander. We're going to be leading. Barry pushes us a little bit off the track. We're going to be leading and have the inside into the left hander though. As Thomas sends it down the inside, hits her rear. We almost spin out. And somehow, out of all of this, we've managed to come out into the lead after being in P3 for basically the entire race. We snatch away P1 in the final sector of the race. And you really did have to see it to believe it. The finest three races in F1 Esports history come to a close with Jano Omir, the winner for the second year in a row in Austin. Thomas Ronhar in second and returning to the podium, Brendan Lee. Yes, that really did just happen. I cannot believe my eyes. What just occurred on that last lap? It was absolute chaos. You best believe there's going to be some discussions in the stewards after this as well. But Jarno Otmir taking the victory. The champion knew that things could kick off. He stayed close enough. Jarno Otmir wins once again around the circuit of the Americas with a last lap pass once again. I have no more words left.